just simply covered with flamingos. Uh, the whole lake is, is just absolutely pink. It's got so many flamingos on it. There must be millions of them out there, huh, Bart? Yeah, bajillions. Yeah. They're, uh, they're just absolutely no end to them there. Decent sized lake, and they're, they're covering the whole thing. But what are you doing, Owen? The pants are on the side. And what are you going to do with the stomach? Yes, yes. You going to eat it? Yes, sir. <laughs> How is it? Pieces, yeah. 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 Is it pretty good? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. How do you cook it? You uh, boil it? Well, on the fire house water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You put you put potatoes or anything with it? Yes, yes. Oh. Can can I I we spotted a herd of games buck, and there's a trophy bull in it. The whole problem is the bull standing right behind the cow. So I'm waiting for him to step out, and then I'll take a shot at him and see if I can get my great big games buck bull trophy. My heart's racing and I'm really excited, hoping he'll do it. They begin to move a little bit. They're getting just a little restless, like they're thinking about disappearing back in the woods. But I'm hanging in there waiting for him. Pretty soon, it looks like I'm going to have my opportunity to shoot. I could tell by the sound and the reaction of the animal that I got my game's buck bull. We went over there and sure enough, here he is right in front of a large termite mound. So we'll get out and be very cautious. These things, if one of them were to get up, they've got those long, sharp horns. They could do a lot of damage to you. And also, they're a very big, powerful animal. So we'll sneak up behind and make sure that he's not going to get up again. And then we'll turn him over and start taking care of him. He's right near a real large termite mound. It's one of the larger ones we've seen here. So we'll go up and check the animal out, and then we can look this termite over, mound over a little better. And this is all built by tiny little insects. I go up very cautiously and check him, and he's definitely down. If I were to get no other animals on a hunt here, this is one I would definitely want to get. He's a real special big guy. And usually when you get up to him, you'll stand on one of the horns just to keep like me going. Nice bull, huh? Yeah. Look at that several more this morning, but we kind of like the horns on this one, so we went ahead and shot him, and he just went right down. It didn't take long at all to get him. dropped right next to this huge termite mound. It's a total termite mound. Yeah, it's pretty big. There must be a baboon someplace in our family tree because I just couldn't help myself. I had to get up on top of this termite mound and do a baboon act right out in front of some bleesbuck who are looking on with amazement. I guess they've never seen anyone do a baboon act on a To mosey on off across the plain. 
13 of them there. It's a bachelorette. 13 of these are look, look at the bulls trying to fight. They're playing. They're all rams, Tom. No kidding. Yeah. yeah. There's another ram. Where do you think? Okay, he's on to the right. Carry on. We spot some big Elon bulls ahead of us, and one of these has got over by the highway, and some poachers have shot him in, right in the front shoulder with a small caliber rifle, and it's starting to get infected, and he's starting to get skinny. So if we don't get him, he'll die. So we'll shoot him, and then uh, skin him out, and use the meat before he dies. Sandy is going to harvest this large elon before he dies. So we'll look for him, and the elon isn't cooperating very well, but Sandy's hanging in there. <laughs> This animal has to be taken, but it's running through all these trees and doesn't seem to stop. And when he goes through the trees, the bullet is deflected by hitting the trees. But we just keep after him and keep on him. Doug's driving and Sandy. Carry on, carry on. In front of me is an incredible sight. This is the largest animal I've ever seen taken on any of my hunts. It's one of the giant elands, and what a massive animal. Well, there is the, the giant old eland. He's going to make one bunch of meat. This morning, Doug and Dwayne and, and Noah went over to trail an Elon that uh, has a hitch in its get along. And I'm waiting here for Sandy. Sandy and Charlie and I are going over and, and get started skinning an Elon that's, that's already hung up over there. Uh, and then, then we're going to shoot a kudu later on if we can find one. I was just out here in the driveway in front of the house and, and I see what looks to be a whole bunch of chips from possibly... Uh, These chips were probably Bushman. left behind by Stone Age man. And who knows how many has, thousands has of years ago it may have been. Like. There doesn't There's seem to be any water here, so no water here, I don't really but who knows what why there may have been, been here, but in earlier times. I see these, these chips just all over old. the driveway here. Here's another, another one right here. It looks as though Dwayne yeah, and Doug's Eland hunt was successful. 
as they brought down even a larger one than the one last night. This is one massive animal. Some kudu lurk in the brush and they're, Dwayne and Doug are trying to let them get in position. They see there's a trophy bull in this herd and they have to get him in position. Dwayne will have one quick shot and he has to make it count. Well, it looks like I got myself a big kudu. Very fast shot. Doug said to take the shot as soon as he stopped. So the ball stopped for a second and I thumped him. He thinks it might go record foot. Extremely big for in this area, I guess. Big ears. Yeah. It's different from other bulls. If you come and look at them, they have rich hair. They have rich hair that you can see as well. Yeah. They run all the way around them. But the other bulls are more prominent than what this one is. Oh. And if you come and look at them, now what would that be over there, Doug? The, like the rock work? That's the building? Turned around. Oh. All turned around. That's pretty fascinating. This water recently kept on sheep and goat It was built by Italian prisoners of war in 1944, so there's this dam and so there's this building here. Wow. Yeah. 1944. 1944, yeah. The war was still on, and they didn't know what to do with the prisoners, so they put them to work. There was a building here that was built by them. You've got some big stakes off that thing, my yeah, god. Yeah. Sure. Some ostrich take to foot and race out across the desert area here. They even bank when they go around corners. Those little wings stick out. A kudu stands in the edge of some trees, thinking... You can pack it in on top of your head, no, like rabbits does. No, no, it's the heaviest ball. It's the wheelbarrow, no. Do you, do you know how to pack things on top of your head? No, it's no, I think no, the wheelbarrow, no. But it's inside, it's no. Do you ever pack anything on top of your head? No, it's no. How come? <laughs> Is that only women? It's no. Only women pack things on their head? That's the hat, Oh, yeah, nice your hat? Yeah, well, that's a, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Some games buck bull peek over the summit of the ridge ahead of us like a picture postcard. There's one bull there that has one horn completely gone and part of another one missing. His name is Stumpy, and he's a very, very nice bull. They stare at us for a while, and pretty soon it is time for them to move on as they move over the top of the hill. There's a big bull with broken horns, you see? Yeah. Mm. It looks very nice in here. Yeah. 
As the moon once again rises above the plains in the camel thorn trees of South Africa, it reminds me that one more day of the hunt is gone and we're running a little short on time. I've decided, decided to check my rifle again. It's a good idea to find out where your rifle is shooting and this is a brand new rifle. It's a 375 and it kicks like a bay mule. I'm having a little trouble hitting with it, it since I'm not really used to that heavy a magnum recoil. Some long-time friends of Sandy's will be joining us on a spring buck calling operation. We're getting set up and ready to go. We'll be taking this site here, and then the rest of us will get out in other sites, and then someone will, will bring them by to us, and hopefully we'll be able to, to get some shooting and possibly some jackal. Is that Feel like a comfortable face, bro? <laughs> yeah, well, you, you've already got your table there. You may even want to eat one right there. And I'm going to huh? sit here and play with the ring plate. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, that, that'll be great, yeah. Is it is it quite active? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hmm. So you can... You look to the single. Well, it looks like, like Paul's in business, or uh, he's... That is he a has... <laughs> Yeah. We're setting up now. Uh, getting some bales of hay to hide behind. He's kind of taking it easy, getting ready for the big hunt here. Dwayne and Doug will be setting up here. Getting ready. We just get set up, then we hear the thunder of hooves and look to the horizon, and here they come. This is a herd of bleeze buck running by. And then following them is a heart of beast doing all he can do to keep up to them as they go thundering across this wide open plain of South Africa in between some termite mounds. The termite mound right in front of us has a hole where an uh, anteater or an odd bark has made a hole in it to eat. The odd bar or anteater are their friends because they there's this type of termite that makes these mounds isn't destructive but there's another kind that is. The site where Sandy and I setting up for our hunt. Flop checking it out to see that it's going to be all always fine here. And We'll probably be shooting out across this, this giant uh, short grass glass here. Uh, and hopefully we'll see quite a bit of action. In front of us we hear a thundering sound and here comes a herd of spring buck by us. Just out of comfortable range with our rifle. So I'll watch him while Sandy watches out front. Sandy spots a warthog hurrying towards Sandy us across and I the plane. Sandy were plane. sitting here waiting for 
some springbok to come by and gripping this giant old boar, warthog. Sandy says he's as big as you could ever expect to get. So, lifting his tusks are worn down a bit, Tom. His tusks are worn down from digging in the rocks, but he's, he is a dandy. While we were concentrating on taking pictures, the pig jumped up and had intentions of ripping us to ribbons. That pig was giving us a little trouble. He was thinking about having a piece of us, I believe. <laughs> Looks like some good eating there, huh? Tom got a water, yeah? Water almost just about ran over Tom. But he got him. Ran over Tom. He just about took to pieces. Yes. And a uh, pretty old boy. Very big chap. The great pretty was his, uh, his tusks off. Got a big bleed spot. In the far distance is a nice little herd of Cape Buffalo. These are one of the more sought after big game animals in Africa. They are one of the big five and thought to be the most dangerous game animal in all of Africa. If you get one of these bulls upset with you, he'll spend quite a bit of time trying to figure out a way to throw you down with those horns and trample you in. The Cape Buffalo are mentioned in 
the big five of African animals. They're a trophy animal and very expensive to hunt. So I don't think I care about hunting one at all right now anyway. After a hard day's hunt and a very rewarding day's hunt, it's easy just to fall asleep in your chair of an evening back at the hunting lodge. The only thing, it's not easy to stay asleep with a pesky little pup. It's not easy to stay asleep with a pesky little pup pulling at your sock and biting on your toes. His teeth are sharp as needles. Get in it, dog. Yeah, on some graceful kudus demonstrate their jumping ability as they clear the fence. Didn't see it jump, did he? One young girl. Yeah, that's right. Another cow. Yeah, that's a calf, isn't it? A graceful blue wildebeest bull stands in front of us pondering on whether he should yeah. fight or maybe turn yeah, and beauty. run. He decides yeah, to do neither. Okay. Okay. Towering above the tallest camel thorn tree is a bull and two cow giraffes. They seem to have a a mouth made of cast iron because mm. they seem to be able to eat these leaves off these thorny camel thorn trees. I understand there's a new addition to the giraffe family at this time. That's the bull looking at it there, huh? Thank you. Yeah. Spotty and I just shot a kudu here. And Spotty's after him. Spotty found him. Spotty yeah, thinks he got him. You get him, Spotty? Okay. Very good son and no. With a kudu bull, taken very well from uh, a range of 200 odd yards, right on the crest of the ridge. Now we've got to get this guy off. Some looks pretty damn heavy on the job, don't you think? We'll figure out how to get this kudu out of here. Spotty's sitting here guarding it. He thinks that that's his. He came up, grabbed hold of it, and started shaking it. Didn't you, Spotty? 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 Spotty, is that your kudu? Huh? That's your kudu, Spotty. Cut his leg off and hide it so he can't get up and run away. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now you explain ourselves off here. Well, that time to just take it easy. 
Thank you, Doug. That's one of mine. That will be a hit. Oh, it's, a, it's almost 10 o'clock now, and the wind won't quite drift today, so uh, the birds are, are flying super fast, and it looks like we have enough here for a real, real good feed. So, uh, how, many have, how many have we got there all together? Oh, 13, that's a good lucky number. That's Bandit stands up. Bandit stands up, and this one is, uh, I don't know, so, so it's actually two different types of grouse. Yeah. Uh, they, Okay, 
34, 50, dug out right near the head. Got forward, really, I think the other one's down. This one does. I agree. Tom and Charlie alongside a nice blitz back, uh, 15 and 5-8 Vaughan left. Tom, would you turn the head towards me please? And drop the, drop the nose a bit, that's it, there you can see it now. Uh, a very, very long shot, uh, basically crosswind though, Tom. Yeah. And you're allowed 6 to 7 inches for the wind, and easily that for the distance. I just got a spring bump. His main is that standing up here, yes. Uh, pretty soon it'll drop down. Found his mason in here. Is that good? Yeah. There we go. Tom has just got a nice spring bump ram, a good ram, 12 and a half inch ram. And uh, it looks pretty good. Nice shot. Uh, directly where you should shoot it. Tom, how do you feel about that one? A real great sunset over the plains of South Africa. And we're having a great hunt and a great time. But there's a cold front moving in that might change the weather a little bit, but not much. We have a nice fire going, and uh, Rick's getting ready to barbecue. What do you call out your barbecue in there, Rick? A puff at A puff at Yeah. I don't think the puff at it's nice, but it's a good puff Oh, yes, it does. And what's in that? Well, it's uh, still time turned inside out. It's an intestine turned inside out. Okay. Oh, well, great. And that's some of the animals that we've, that we've got. We also taste tested some Eland and some Gamesbuck, and they were excellent. Okay, now what did you How big am I? Uh-huh. Then I'll be ready. I'll be getting a rabbit. Oh, okay. then. Uh, yes. You like to drive, do you know? Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Okay. That's good. We're, we're going to see something big this morning, huh? Yes. Yeah, okay. This morning we're getting ready to look for, uh, for a steam box. Wants to see the we were traveling along and Doug spotted this 
super big warthog. So he was running across this open country here. So I tried my luck at a running shot on him. And it looks like we've got another warthog. So that makes two warthogs for me. I really like hunting hogs because they're, uh, they're so smart and, uh, and you've got such good eating when you get a hog that I just can't resist a good shot at a hog. And so now I've got two of them to have to deal with to get home and they're not easy to get into this country. They have to be dipped in Africa and then dipped again in this country. But I got him now. Doug spotted this extremely large warthog in the distance and we couldn't get him to stop so I shot him on the run at, a, at about 200 yards. I already have shot one warthog but decided that I just couldn't pass up this extra large one. He has two warts on each side of the face. The sow only has one set of warts, just the upper one, where the boar has the upper and the lower. It's thought some of these warts might possibly be scent glands. One ear is ripped up from, from who knows what, and he has pretty nice upper tusks, although they're worn off some from digging in the rocks. His lower tusks are pretty well worn off, but he can still eat grass. They would be quite a bit longer, and, and they self-sharpen against the upper one to help cut the grass off. These warthogs, as far as I'm concerned, are about one of the, one of the most fun animals to get. And a, a large boar can weigh about 220 pounds. A little steam buck stands in front of a few trees just watching us. Gives Dwayne plenty of time to get ready. This is one of the animals he wanted to get. And they're one of the smaller antelope that you can hunt. The shot rang out and it was good. We've, Dwayne's got his steam buck now. Like all the rest of the animals there, these are extremely good eating, and all the animals we hunted were good eating. There wasn't one of them that was a bit strong or gamey tasty. They were just excellent eating animals, and so we really had some good feeds on them. He rubbed his head on the grass then to, uh, to leave his scent? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, in the same spot each day? Oh, is that right? Yeah. Now these don't eat small birds and eggs like the diker? Oh, yeah. And they're smaller. We're now than the done diker. with our hunt, and we've got lots of animals. It's going to take a while to take care of them when I get home to get them all mounted and, and put in my little museum. But I finally convinced Noel to get up on the termite mound and do a baboon act to celebrate a successful... We have a spring here. That's a nocturnal rabbit they have here in South Africa. Lift him up. Pardon? Oh, it's not a rabbit? The rodent? Yeah. Okay. Uh, look at those hind feet. He must really be able to, to jump like crazy with those feet. How high do they jump, Doug? Lift him up with a tail so we can see that tail. Not too high? Yeah, hold him up so we can see that tail. Yeah. Um, then what do they eat, Doug? Hold his face up so we can see that. Uh, this was a high weight kill. Pardon? Roots? Oh, they must dig them with those, those front feet, I used to say. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. 
Gladys and, and Dion are, are going out and gather their firewood here. Gladys and Dion will be gathering their firewood in the old traditional manner as their people have for centuries. These sticks that Gladys will be taking for wood all have thorns on them. But just a quick whack with her cane-like device seems to take care of those thorns that knocks them all off and Dion is helping very well. He only has to be told once, and he runs and does what he's told to do. I hope my grandkids watch this. Yeah. And, and Dion continue gathering wood, even little Dion's packing some wood. And by the way, those little tennis shoes are some that my grandkids had outgrown, and we brought them over for Dion. It looks like they're a little too big for him. And we asked Gladys, aren't those a little too big for him right now? She says, oh, no, no, they're just right. And so he's wearing them, and I think they really need to wear shoes over here because those camel thorns have a lot of thorn on them, and there are thorns on everything here and on the ground, and so they can't really go barefoot very well there. Gladys will turn that little pile of wood over and put a cloth around her head to help hold the, the sticks up on her head, and then she'll take them back to her camp and... She doesn't even use an axe to break the wood up into fire-sized pieces. She just puts them under her foot and breaks them that way. And the cooking is done in an old tar bucket or something that they picked up someplace. And they knock a bunch of holes in it for air circulation. And then she gets back to her camp with it real soon and she'll unwrap the wire from that's holding the sticks together and neatly roll it up so she'll have it the next time she wants to use it. And now she's breaking up some of the smaller stuff for kindling right under her foot, the ones she can't just really break by hand, and get that fire going and get some coals made so she can start some cooking. And the cooking's all done in a Dutch oven, and, but they're pretty clever with those Dutch ovens. And everything's cooked about. She and Noel will cut up this spring here that I skinned out. It was a roadkill, but it'll be good. <laughs> Is the tail good too? Yes, from the same Okay, that's good. Although we won't be eating with these people, we eat in the hunting lodge food cooked more or less similar to home on an electric range. I certainly wouldn't mind eating with these people. They're very wonderful people and extremely clean. I really enjoyed hanging out with them. That was just as much of a treat to me as hunting the animals themselves. They are very courteous, and they have a very nice culture. The entire extended family is there, from the great-grandpa to the tiny little grandchildren, and all the aunts, uncles, and cousins, and everyone, sons and daughters, and everyone is there. Now Gladys has some little squash she'll put in. Gladys is removing the seeds from the squash. Do you, you do you don't eat the seeds? No. No, you don't eat the seeds. Okay. Okay. The, the red carry spice? 
Yes. We'll go in next. Okay. Now that goes in the kettle. <laughs> the fire is too much heavy. Oh, too much fire. Uh huh. Yeah. The pot is boiling. It's the salt? Yes. The salt is going in next. And it'll be stirred. The meat's cooking pretty good, it looks like. And some fish oil. Okay. Now we'll come the potatoes. The potatoes next. Onions next. Squash goes on. All right. Okay. And the lid goes on. Can you cook it for a few more minutes then? Yeah, it is. On screen, Dion? Yes? Uh-huh. Yes? Okay, that's good. Mm-hmm. Oh. Time to soak up the fire just a little more. That is cooking, and everyone else is standing by waiting for the pot to be done. There's the sun, as you push up over South Africa one more time. Squash, the, squash the squash is already done. Yeah. Okay. Now Gladys will take the potatoes out. Oh, is it very nice? Yeah. Good. That's yeah. real good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They're very nice. Okay. Is the squash nice, Dion? Oh, that's good. That's very good. Now, lettuce will taste third. Oh, good. Yeah. And then you eat bread with your uh, with your uh, steam buck and spring.